On this episode, I'm going to show you how to take off the intake manifold uh, for any project you might be doing underneath. So, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we're going to start by removing the air bridge. Uh, obviously, I installed the Callaway in one of the earlier episodes. Um, I had put it on just to make sure, test it out, make sure everything is working, and it does work. Unfortunately, I didn't get a sound recording, but you're going to not know that because when you actually watch the Callaway um, video, there's going to be an actual sound recording of before and after, and uh, yeah, sometimes movie magic works in mysterious ways. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take this air bridge off. Now, one thing I didn't mention, uh, the very first thing I did was I did a full coolant drain um, on the car. So the car currently has no coolant in it. I actually did that earlier today. Um, I came in, I got underneath, opened the stopcock, drained the coolant out. Um, and then I just kind of let it do its own thing uh, on its own as time went by. Um, I think I went out for a walk and stuff. So. Yeah, you're just gonna drain the coolant and then remove this air bridge. So now I've seen it done two ways. You can remove the entire throttle body. Uh, I am probably gonna take the throttle body off and give it a good cleaning. I just checked inside, it looked kind of dirty. Uh, but we're gonna wanna remove the actuator here, the throttle body actuator, as well as on the other side, we're gonna wanna remove the throttle position sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and take those two parts off. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go ahead and remove is we're gonna remove the coil pack connectors um, from both sides of the fuel rails, as well as these wing tips um, that hold the wire in place and the uh, injector connectors here. Um, now that all these in, uh, injector connectors have been uh, removed, uh, you'll see I just literally just dropped it. There's this little blue seal that goes in them. Um, for most of them, you'll see that they kind of stuck inside the actual connector. Um, that's fine, but if any are left behind, you're going to want to pull them off and keep them in a safe place because they are they are going to go back in there. That's just a you know seal to protect from any. Um, weather elements from getting in. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go ahead and take care of is there's quite a few hoses connected to the throttle body. Um, one of them runs down here and over. We're just gonna remove it at this point, this junction here, and uh, leave it connected to the throttle body for now. As well as on the other side, there's two or three hoses uh, connected. We're gonna remove them as well. So this is a shot from the other side. There's one that runs down here into the radiator. Um, this one up top here is going to get removed as well. Uh, I think that's it on this side. So let's go ahead and take care, take care of it. So we earlier removed these gray tabs, um, similar to the ones on this side. Uh, on the driver's side, you also have to remove the uh, EVAP solenoid. It goes all the way back. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the harness right off of here. I think if you push. We're also going to disconnect the uh, power brake vacuum hose over here. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the PC valve supply hose uh, right from the manifold. So let's get that off. Um, we're getting close. As you can see, it's pretty dirty all through here, so I am going to give it a second clean. I think it's a good idea because once the manifold comes off, you don't really want any of that shit getting down in the uh, in there. So we're going to go ahead and give it a, a more thorough clean once a lot of this stuff is actually officially moved out of the way. So let's go ahead and remove this. All right, so what you've seen me do so far is I've removed this PCV valve. 
Uh, down here, you'll see it goes over here is a 10 millimeter nut you have to remove to, in order to kind of push these out of the way. Now I moved them over some of these hoses. I also, if you look down here, it does clamp into the manifold along the top. So it's just to hold in place. Ah, you're being stubborn. So it's just to hold in place. So you're going to want to just kind of gently pry out of those. Uh, don't want no broken parts. So let's go ahead and take care of this fuel rail. see the full starting to come up. Um, I'm removing this here. Uh, honestly, forget what this goes to. There's a connection right here on the block. And if we go to the other side, uh, there's a hole. You just remove it out of there. I'm going to slide that out of the way. Uh, there's quite a few connections in behind the manifold that I need to get to. And uh, with that in the way, it's kind of making it difficult. All right, guys, so I'm going to try and give you a pretty good view of what's going on behind there. Uh, back here, this pipe needs to come out, uh, this rubber hose. And there's a plug right next to it. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Um, that needs to get disconnected. If you're on the passenger side, you should be able to disconnect that fairly easy. So the wonders of editing. Uh, makes this seem like this was like a super super easy task but there is always that one problem uh, for me it was the um, airline that runs this little baby uh, was just stuck and no matter how much I tried to pull it off it wouldn't come but now that it's off hopefully that means the uh, manifold should be able to just slide forward and off Hey guys, thanks for watching. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, tomorrow we'll be taking care of this oil pressure sender unit and hopefully with the relocation kit from DPE Corvettes, I'll have the Corvette back on the road uh, by Saturday. Uh, with that being said, uh, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you on the next episode.